Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we've actually pulled together um, Putnam County and Westchester to talk about the League of Women Voters in action in those two counties. And I have two wonderful guests today. One is Eileen Riley, who is president of the League of Women Voters of Putnam County. Yes, thank you, Sandy. Yes, and Mary Lou Green, who is president of the Westchester County League of Women Voters. Welcome. Happy to be here. Yeah. Mary Lou, can you just give us, I, how long have you been president, by the way, of the Westchester League? I'm going into my sixth year. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. All right. So what is the League of Women Voters all about? Uh, what is its mission? What are our goals? Uh, how did it start? We are all about the right to vote and the fight to vote and education for voting. We started after, right after, or at the same time actually simultaneously in New York State with the passage of the 19th Amendment and women's right to vote. Um, the realization being that, okay, we have these new citizens who are franchised now to vote and they've never been taught they've never had discussions. No one's ever told them about what's going on in government and even how government works. So we got an early start on that. And as I said, it seems to be, um, we're, still, we're still doing that because it's, it's just like democracy. It, you, you have to it, keep working at you democracy. Ha you have to tend your garden or the mm -hmm, weeds are gonna mm -hmm. grow. Um, so our primary goal is uh, the education of the voters. We are nonpartisan, which in the sense that we never ever um, endorse a candidate or a party or get involved in anything like that. What we want to do is to make sure that people know what they feel they need to know to go into the ballot. Which is so, in, which is so important and becomes more important, I suppose, every day. I mean, it's always been important that you know what you're doing. And um, so the League has done a lot of good education. Yeah. Or even even knowing who's on the ballot, uh -huh. um, we are this year. Um, we're doing what we call local elections, and there's probably 150, 160 seats in Westchester County that are going to be in some districts on the ballot, and there's no other way now, especially with the decline in media, for people mm -hmm. to know who am I going to be, who will I have the opportunity to vote with, and we've we have a printed guide that we publish and we mail it in some locations and we have it at the libraries. We print about 50,000 copies every, every year. And we have people in some of our locations who will walk into the poll and they will have the voter's guide. Not because the voter guide tells them who to vote for, but it tells them who's going to be on their party. And as much as we feel like we can tell them, still maintaining our, our nonpartisan basis. Right. And Eileen, you, there wasn't a Putnam League of Women Voters. I mean, Westchester League has been around for a while, but there really wasn't a, a Putnam League where, where women not in, did they have to go someplace else to join a League of Women Voters? Well, from, it's my understanding that there was a League of Women Voters in the 70s and 80s, and it disbanded. Uh -huh. um, women were home in those days, raising their children, and as the children got older, they went into office. They ran for office in Putnam County and became involved in different capacities. So it was, um, it was in 19, what, what year did I say it was? Here we go. 2000, it was 2008 eight. when we became a MAL unit. And that is a member, members at Lodge. We were uh, a league in training. And in 2010, I became president of the League of Women Voters. So then you got out of training. We came out were. of training <laughs> and we became an official league. Right. And right. we had a president at that time. And uh, the following year, I became president of the League of Women Voters of Putnam County. And also at that time, it was decided we should be the League of Women Voters of Eastern Putnam County. But when I became president, I changed the name to the full county uh, because we wanted everybody to have the opportunity. Uh, we didn't want to limit it to just one side of the county. Right. And it's interesting because in Westchester there are some other leagues. There's the county league and then there are several other leagues I think in, in Westchester, right? We're a grassroots organization that starts 
hopefully, in your community. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we call the local leagues. And in the Westchester County, we have eight local leagues. Once upon a time, we had 34 local leagues. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as you said, with, with Putnam, um, as some leagues d dissolved because they didn't have the, enough people to do volunteer work, we now have the River Towns League, which takes all of the River Towns in Westchester. Mm -hmm. um, we have eight local leagues, and our county league is, I don't want to get technical, I won't tell you even what we're called, but our primary purpose is to follow what goes on with Westchester County government, and in those elections, and also with the government and with the county budget, and to try to represent um, the citizenry in, in the government, in the county government. We're the only organization that does that. But we also try to provide whatever support we can for the eight local leagues um, to help them work together. Mm -hmm. I remember at the, the, when I was on the county board, the League of Women Voters always had a representative at most of our yes. budget meetings and um, made statements at the budget hearings about issues that they cared about in the budget, whether it was daycare or environment or you know some other issues. And, and I assume that that's still going on. We still do that. We still have a, uh, we do what we call a study, which is mm -hmm. to study the budget. Um, representatives from the county administration will come and talk to us in, in a public meeting. Whenever the league does a study, we, we always start with a public meeting, informational meeting that anyone can attend um, because that's where we want to educate the mm -hmm, public mm -hmm. and we talk about what's in this year's budget. And then we have what we call a league meeting where we talk amongst ourselves as to whether or not we, there's, we really have something to say about whatever it is we are studying. Um, we're very, I think, unusual in that regard that it's not a board of directors in Washington who sets these kinds of policies. And there are times when we will not come to what we call consensus and we won't issue any statement. But every year we do issue a statement on, um, and I've been going through the old files in our office, you can mm -hmm. imagine after 100 years. Um, and back in the day, <laughs> when as we you know women women were more at home I, I i was amazed and inspired with the amount of work and information that the county league gave to the public about everything that goes on in in the um throughout the year as well as in the county budget um, nowadays it's really it's really even hard when you to look at the you know first of all you don't see a budget it's very little paperwork um, but it's more difficult to understand what's actually goes into budget items. I, I've, mm -hmm. I've studied the budget in Scarsdale, which some of our local communities will study their local mm -hmm. village budget or their local school board budget, and they do it every year, and they have a history of knowing what's in there and what the issues are, and usually the local officials are, are very cooperative in, in talking to the league because they understand that the league helps to educate the voter and get their interest, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that we're nonpartisan. Right, Eileen. I just because I, you don't have a hundred years of, of records uh, <laughs> in Putnam County, uh, but uh, what do you? What is your focus in in Putnam? Do do you do budget activities with the county board, or do you you know kind of develop issues, have forums? What, what is, how, do you, how do you kind of work it? Because different communities do different things. Um, I guess our primary focus, uh, we started with a small league of uh, maybe six members, mm -hmm. and our primary focus was on candidate debates and voter registration. And uh, we even lost some of those members, and there were three, maybe four of us. But we never missed candidate debates, and that's for the entire county, mm -hmm. uh, for county, uh, and sometimes New York State candidates, county candidates, and local candidates. Um, and as I said, voter registration. Um, and then we began spreading our wings a bit and we did studies. Uh, environmental issues were probably one of our first educational forums and we just had our third mm -hmm. this year. Um, 
And that's primarily what we have done to date. Mm -hmm. uh, we attend um, county uh, legislator meetings. We attend uh, town board meetings. We uh, discuss issues at those meetings, at our meetings, league meetings, mm -hmm. whether or not, well, discuss them in general to see what do we want to be involved in, where do we want what do we want to study further? Mm -hmm. uh, we just recently had an issue with the uh, Putnam County Legislature that we disagree with, and uh, there's a meeting on Wednesday, and we'll, we've prepared a statement, and we'll present that to the county executive. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping Is that, that about the transparency yes. or uh, getting information out instead yes. of having it Yes, it is. Uh, private, yeah. We're hoping that they will reconsider, will give it more consideration uh, mm -hmm. before they take a final vote on that. Right. Um, but you know, that's why the League is so important because the League gets into issues that other organizations really, I don't think, are taking a position on or, or thinking about because the League does, you know, just the ethics, the transparency, the election yeah. reforms. It, it's, I mean, know. instead of becoming more transparent, they're hiding whatever their activities are, it appears, mm -hmm. um, instead of being transparent. I mean, we already have an, a law in place where uh, certain documents are stamped confidential, and I, I see no reason to enhance that. So at this point, they're suggesting and have the legislature has approved uh, that any employee that is in the county and any consultant working for the county can stamp a document confidential. And so the county executive is holding her public hearing and it's in her conference room. I don't know what sort of audience we'll have, but um, we're prepared to mm -hmm. you know, give our statement and we're not in support of it and have not understood the reason why they feel it's important to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's the, as I said, that's the importance of the league, getting into these issues that, that most people sit at home and say, I, you know, I don't have time for this or whatever. Uh, but it's so, I mean, so many of these issues are important. It's like how government operates. And, you know, that's, that's where the league has put so much time and effort to make sure it's operating correctly, whether, dealing with the budgets, you know, are the focuses right? Um, we're dealing with issues like this, more open government transparency in government. Um, so that's, that's really, so what happened, I guess what you're saying, I mean, is that things change. You weren't thinking about that eight years ago. Oh Lord, no. We didn't have enough time or, or members to do anything close to that. So uh -huh. we, but issues change, don't they? I oh, mean, issues, issues have changed, changed greatly. Along. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, just recently, we again, we had the Reproductive Health Act that was passed uh, in Albany, and some counties uh, disagreed with it and prepared uh, letters of resolution, and again, we disagreed with that. Um, uh, so, you know, why? Uh, I don't know that these letters of resolution actually accomplish anything except making a statement and advising the governor that they're in disagreement. Um, but these are the things that are happening today. Well, I know on the state level, uh, the League of Women Voters is quite active yeah. on the state level, and they come to uh, my office to lobby me on different things, and um, you know, are are there pushing different kinds of legislation? But the state level, I, I guess the federal level has federal level has goals, right, Mary Lou, and for the League of Women Voters, whoops, and um, the and then the state level also has their goals or missions or things that they've come to consensus on. And then the, the Westchester and Putnam League have there. So you have a, a grouping of people, right? Right. right. I, I mean, the National League has uh, been very busy in the last couple of decades uh, working throughout the country in trying to, to fight efforts that we see at, vo at voter suppression. I mean, mm -hmm. if you hear of someone taking a current district map to court, I've seen that in the state of Florida, uh, the National League and the Florida League actually were part of those, those court proceedings to, to be involved with that. Um, as I said, it's, it's, it, you have to continue to 
to, to, to water the garden to keep it growing. Um, and generally we try, to, we try to have a little bit of order in that a local league should not be coming out and taking a position on something that, that is counter to what national or state mm -hmm, has mm -hmm, said. Mm -hmm. So we, we do try to, we'll say, oh, that's a state program, or, you know, we can't really influence New York State tax law. We will look to, to our group in Albany to do mm -hmm. that. And most often, I think you've said it, you kind of study the issue yes. and trying to get the consensus of the members on any level to decide what your focus is going to be. And sometimes it's really hard to develop that consensus, isn't it? <laughs> just, Not everybody agrees. <laughs> just, just ask us every 20 years when the question of whether or not there should be a constitutional convention yeah. in New yes. York State. Uh -huh. um, that really, a lot of leaguers are very passionate on one side or the other. If I remember 20 years ago, the league was against it. No. No, for it, and then I believe that this time round the league was against it. Am I right, or was it reversed? Uh, they, they supported it this year. This year, okay. At the time. But okay. I think they have now reversed themselves. Well, I think and that 20 years ago, what they did, what the state league did not like was the way that delegates, if there was a right. convention, the way yes. that delegates were being selected. And they made the decision, well, if the delegate, if, if that process isn't right, then Right. Then, then we and can't, that could mean that state legislators to, that. to be part of the constitutional right. convention as members. That, yes, it was going to pretty much mirror. It could pretty much mirror what what right. the, the assembly and the like. Senate. Right. And yeah. then and then this year the state league the board mm -hmm. decided to um, endorse a convention, and a many many leagues throughout New York State had issue with that. Right, because they they just didn't they just didn't agree with that. Uh -huh. So so right. it's this is a very it's, controversial it inside and, and, inside and the and league. And and that I think that says something about the makeup of who our members are. That it's not as if we're like cookie cutter. We all agree right. this is this is the way you should you should go on right. that. True. I mean, we had an educational forum last year, and we discussed the pros and the cons. And we, to be truly nonpartisan, we invited the uh, one of the members of NYSET who spoke. The New York State Teachers Union, Union of Teachers, yes, because they were they were the most vocal uh, against against it. the against New it. York State yeah. Constitution constitutional convention, and even our members were mixed. But mm -hmm. we held the forum, and as usual, we try to always present both sides to mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. we're talking about. And it, it didn't get heated, but, uh, you know, people took sides, and I'm glad we had the forum. It was very educational. Right. Um, but it's just recently I read that New York State has decided that they do not support that, which surprised me. Right. Well, again, there's different times, different, different, yes. different years, different times, different issues going on. And sometimes you give up on, on having, in this case, the delegates. I, I was actually very supportive of changing the way delegates were mm -hmm. selected and have yeah. um, just public as delegates, not elected officials. But, and I put a bill in and it went nowhere. <laughs> well, I thought so, that was permitted anyway that you or I, or not you, but right. we could be a delegate. You could. It's just it hard when you're running, achieve. if yeah. you're running against your state senator right. in a race, it might be a little harder. It might not be. It's hard to know. Um, but they've had name recognition and, and whatever. And then, True. and they, you know, all of us that are elected have an opportunity at any time to change parts of the constitution, send it out to the public for a vote. But, um, and then, I mean, the big issue that you have too is, is the, um, the redistricting has always been one that I know you want fair and good representation in redistricting uh, of the legislative districts which come after our census, whenever that occurs soon, um, April two thousand. April. Uh, do you have a you know? Are, are, do you look at redistricting in a certain way that you're looking for you know not gerrymandering and just having you know a, it looks like a, a compact district that seems reasonable yes. for legislators to run in. Yes, uh, absolutely, uh -huh. certainly. 
and, and, the, and the League has been hand in hand with a lot of other good government groups in trying. That becomes a state by state issue. Even mm -hmm. though it went recently to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court threw up their hands and said that they as a court, my limited understanding is that they as a court should not be saying how redistricting should be drawn. Um, but the leagues and other good government groups are now in state courthouses and in federal courthouses still trying to, to, um, address to, 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 to address it. And the, cons the census issue, um, it's very important that people participate in the census. And mm -hmm. we've started a new program called Know Your Government in, in the county. Uh, where we're working in, in libraries and we are having little workshops for an hour and a half or something. Uh, we did the first one last fall to talk mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. midterm elections and to just, in a nonpartisan way, explain um, to people, again, what's going to happen if I, go, if I go to vote? What mm -hmm. am I going to be voting for? Um, and we will be, ours this fall will be dedicated to, to helping people understand what the census is about and what are your rights and privileges in mm -hmm, taking mm -hmm. part in the census. Right. Well, it's very important that everybody gets counted because we yes. all know that from a monetary perspective, the monies that come yes. in from the gov federal government uh, are, are portioned in many instances by the number, our population. And if we have a lower population, we don't get as much in our federal funds that we've sent right. <laughs> back from from yeah. Washington, um, you know, which is which is really important. Or even the number of delegates in the in the houses of Congress. Right. right? Yes. Right. I mean, it's a difference. Fundamental. And that's our clout and, and so on. Yeah. Is there anything going on with the census or um, in Putnam County that you're involved with, or is that not not yet? Not yet. Not yet. Um, as I said, the New York State uh, League. And biannual convention, we had somebody from the census speak to all of us. Mm -hmm, and it's very mm -hmm. important, very interesting, and that information needs to get out on a local level. Um, and we would like to do something like that, but we're at the moment <laughs> overwhelmed with organizing uh, candidate forms for six towns and two villages and trying to figure out the logistics oh of that. Oh, my goodness. So once we get that resolved. Right. Uh, but let's go to we'll those debates, on. and those debates are so important because yeah. it's the only only real way that you can, if all candidates come, that you can see both candidates or multiple candidates uh, right in front of you. And you know whether you go to the debate, which I think is good to do, or you watch it. I think you put them all on television, don't you? you? Yeah. Are they all now on yes. television? So, um, you know, that people can see their local government just as they can do on a federal level. You know, we do it, you do it, you all do it locally. I don't think that there are many other groups that have debates. There are a few other organizations, but the League is the one that's really noted for running really, really good debates. And well, you know, before we formed our local League, there were debates taking place in Putnam County, but they were partisan. Uh, there was a local newspaper out of Phillipstown that was doing debates, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there were local citizen groups um, and were well intended, but it was one party or another party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there was no nonpartisan, there was no bringing all of the candidates together to talk to one another, mm -hmm. have questions asked, and, and get to know right. them. And that was one of my primary reasons for right. getting the league up and running and How maintaining it. How do you get it. the questions? to be as nonpartisan as you can possibly get them. Do you, does the league help with starting out with some questions or do you rely on the audience or? We always have questions prepared in case the audience mm -hmm. does not. Um, when we first started the league, we would allow the audience members to go to the microphone and then we could not control uh, the questions. Uh, because people were asking personal questions or they mm -hmm, would just pontificate mm -hmm. for five minutes and never right. answer questions. So we we right. came around to putting the questions on index cards right. and we vet them to make sure mm -hmm. there's no questions of a personal nature and no duplications and that we mm -hmm. understand the question and then they're given to the moderator. Right. And the moderator is 
often from I, I know it's um, some of the areas the the county league provides the moderator or you switch sometimes it's, between there counties. You can't moderate where you vote. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Right. Yeah, we the, switch. Uh -huh. the, the, the county league actually has a group that trains and um, uh, schedules moderators for what we call a moderator, mm -hmm. uh, a league moderated debate. Right. Uh, and we have very specific guidelines and that, you know, everyone gets to speak their equal time. Um, we don't want the audience booing or we, uh -huh. we, we won't even let people bring in placards when they come into the room. We try to uh -huh. keep it very dull. Dull. <laughs> as dull as possible. As Which dull is good, as so possible. you can hear the Which candidates. Good, so you can hear the candidates. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that, that the questions aren't hard hitting. Because uh, uh -huh. yeah. that's what, uh, you know, the candidate should be able to answer those. But um, we don't need for them to get personal. Right. No, right. no yeah. personal questions. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's what's hard. And okay. no personal videotaping. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 a, it's a lot of work putting together a candidate's form that will work and run perfectly. Um, we've been successful at it. And, and you've had, I mean, just to get a little bit into modernity, we've ta I, I probably mentioned that we don't, you know, we don't have the newspapers we have, but we do have right. social media. And mm -hmm. we often will videotape a debate, and we have candidates agree that we, we the, de the tapes are ours, and no right. one can manipulate them. Well, there are times, and, and Eileen's had this happen, <laughs> where now it's so easy for people on social media to take anything that they find right. and turn it into whatever they want. And so yeah, we're right. still struggling with trying to, uh, trying to, to, well, to keep that. Well, I was that. recently told that if you have a copyright at the end of the video, and then, of course, we have the candidates sign that they, they can use it if they use it in its entirety. It can't be segmented right. and used for their right. own purposes. But because we did not have a copyright, um, we had a, a, a candidate who felt whether he signed that agreement or not, he still had right. the legal right to So in other chop words, <laughs> this is never ending. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's always something that comes it's along like social media. It's hard to sleep over the summer when you're organizing <laughs> these, and I'm very happy on election day. <laughs> you, you, have, you have people come in with their own telephones, and they can, you oh, know, yeah. they, can record, they can record whatever piece they want. Right. So yes, it's, uh, it's, it's, very it's new. keeping the weeds out of the right. garden. Right. <laughs> well, this is going to be a very exciting year, I think, for everyone. And with all the new election law reforms that have come into place in the next year, early voting and everything else is going to be very exciting so it you're going to have a lot of work to do well the board of elections will uh, right with all yes. those additional days um, and you'll educate the public though we, we have in that been. process um, right. we actually invited our board of election commissioners to a general meeting open to the public uh, where we had a good turnout right. and they spoke about the new voting right. laws and how it will affect our county Okay, well, and we have if I can say one thing quick, as a league yeah. person, I really uh -huh. want to congratulate our lawmakers in Albany because mm. some of this election law reform has long coming and we so appreciate important. the people who who voted to have some of these changes. Right. Well, we're, very, we're also very happy and we'll work with you to be sure that everybody knows about the new election yes. reforms. I want to thank you for all your good work That's with good. the league and um, I thank the audience for watching. If they have, if you have any questions at all, to call either one of our league presidents or to call me at my office, 914-941-1111. Thank you, have a wonderful evening.